Record crowd at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. FSU's won four of the last five in this rivalry. Gators up a three spot in the first. Chris Ricks, no Crafonzo Thorpe. Dominic Robinson works well, 35 yards, 7-3. How about 17-6, third quarter, and Ron Zook pulling one out of the back of the playbook. Chris Leak to Andre Caldwell, back to the true freshman, who is a true talent. He goes 30 yards, and that sets up Leak to his big tight end, Ben Troop. 25 yards, and two-point conversion was good, so the Gators are down just three, 17-14. They tie it at 17, and this is a top-10 nomination, not for Chris Ricks. That'd be bottom 10. He's stripped by Gus Scott. Kiwan Ratliff picking it up, 77 yards, wearing his PF Flyers. Gators defense came in leading the SEC with five touchdowns score. There they lay one on FSU, and... Coach says, hey, what happened there? Well, payback comes right here. Pat Watkins picking up the fumble. First third quarter points given up by Florida in six games. We are tied at 24. Fourth quarter. Florida deep in its own end zone. Leak looking for the trooper. Ben, big gainer. Same drive and, well, never change a winning hand. Leak. Going to put one right in Troop's hands, and oh, right off his fingertip. Didn't extend the arms, and instead of six, Leak and Florida are going to have to settle for three, up 27-24. Leon Washington fumbles. Who got it? Well, they said Washington did, although Channing Crowder came out of the pile with the football, and when they said, no, nah, it's not your ball, he spiked the ball, got a penalty, and that gives FSU an extra down. Third and goal, Washington does not get in. So that should have been fourth down. Rick says on this fourth down, you better call my number. Oh, he's sneaky. He scores. Florida State takes the lead, and Coach B's pumped up. He just hides it well. Ricks, he's not hiding it. 31-27. Three minutes left. Fourth and two. Leak gets the corner and the first down. Next play. This is about as pretty a pass as a pass can be, right? To Troop, foot in, his second touchdown, fifth of the season, 34-31. Looks good for the Gators, but look out. Here comes Ricks, third and 14. Oh, he misses P.K. Sam. Fourth and 14, Ricks comes up big against a Florida defensive secondary that had been great coming into this game. Went Watch soft to his right. Late. Watch to his right. Packs the arm. He'll throw it toward the end zone. He's got P.K. Sam. Up and he makes the catch. Yeah. Touchdown of SO. Touchdown P.K. Sam. 55 seconds left. I just got some pressure. It was a, a throw out to P.K. He, he uh, got open. I put it up there. He made a great play. So it was a great job by him. 38-34, your final, well, and then it got ugly. Uh, tempers flare, and we're gonna pick on you, Reggie Lewis, with the arrow for a couple reasons. One, in a football fight, never take your helmet off. Two, don't get in a football fight. And three, if you do, make sure it's not on national television so we can pick you out every time. Coach Zook would like to see you in his office ASAP. Gators are beaten and beheaded, 38-34. 72 points scored in this game, ties the second most combined points scored in a single game in the history of this rivalry. Of the five highest scoring games in this rivalry, Florida State, the winner in four of them. Tennessee needing a win at Kentucky to have any hope of a spot in the SEC championship game. Fourth and goal for the Wildcats, Arliss Beach. Arliss caps a 14-play drive, and Kentucky's up 7-0. Third quarter, Cedric Houston, 26 yards. Watch him just knock over Mike Williams. Right there, boom! First down for Tennessee. Knocking guys over. Same dive, Casey Clawson dropping back for the balls. Mark Jones, Clawson, 11 of 27. Only two for 110 yards. It's 10-7 volunteers. Then it's time for Tennessee's defense to step up. Another big hit right here. Jabril Wilson on Chris Bernard. That's a top 10 nomination. Late fourth, here's Cedric Houston. He ran for 87 yards on the day. Tennessee wins 20 to seven. The Volunteers have defeated Kentucky 19 straight times. So Tennessee clinches at least a share of the SEC East. Tennessee meets LSU for the SEC title only if Georgia wrecks against Georgia Tech. First quarter, David Green with the play action and oh, he is such a faker. 
cameraman bit. So did the arrows. Football still in Green's hands, soon to be in Fred Gibson's hands. Green, 16 to 22 pass and 235 yards. Top 10 nomination here. Georgia would score on this possession when Green's fumble was recovered in the end zone by his freshman center. Less than two minutes later, Georgia on the board again. Craig Lumpkin scoring on the first play after a block punt. It's 14 zip. Second quarter. How about something from Georgia Tech? How about not? Reggie Ball, who later in this game was penalized for pushing the Georgia trainer. Bubble. Bulldogs recover. Ball, the freshman quarterback, be knocked out of this game later with a concussion. Ran into his own man there. Tech runs into an Ugsaw. 34-17, Georgia. Three-way tie atop the SEC East. Tiebreaker goes to the team with the higher BCS ranking and or head-to-head -head competition. Georgia defeated Tennessee this season. Therefore, it will represent the East in next week's league championship game against LSU. Nebraska may be going to the Holiday Bowl. Frank Solich is going on an extended holiday. Fired Saturday after 41 years with the program. The last six is its head football coach. Solich compiled a 58-19 record, but led Big Red to just one Big 12 championship game and just one national championship game. Just one. Solich's termination is immediate. His staff will coach the team in its bowl game. Solich won more games than Devaney and Osborne in his first five seasons, but was just 16 and 12 in his last 28 games. Nine of those 12 losses by 10 or more points. In his first 49 games at Nebraska, Solich lost just seven games. Last 15 meetings with Miami. A lot of emotion here. Ask Michael Irvin and Rod Rutherford. Your job today is to carry that banner and wear it proud. Yeah, the season hasn't gone as well as you want it to go, but you can make that ship right today. BCS game on the line. You get it right. Every man take care of his job. Get it done today. I'd like to give, uh, I guess, Miami a uh, goodbye present, a nice one to push the ACC with. <laughs> All right, everybody's fired up. First quarter, <laughs> Tyrone Moss, gaping hole, 30 yards. Touchdown, and it's 7-7. Why was that hole so gaping? Well, a little pulling guard. What we want is a seal here and a seal here and run this play in the alley. Moss, 21 carries, 115 yards. Second quarter, first and goal. Moss up the middle. 14-7, Miami. Pittsburgh's rush defense porous. 80th nationally. They've allowed seven 100-yard rushers. Moss, again, great help from the line there. Three Miami players forming a wall. 39 for the Hurricanes. Brock Berlin. Jason Gathers, a routine screen, but Jason Gathers keeps on matriculating the ball down the field all the way to the one. 78 yards. Garrett Payton would take it in from there for the touchdown. Payton ran for 131. It's 21-7 Canes. Fourth quarter, Larry Fitzgerald still without a TD catch until here. Rod Rutherford hooks up with him, extends the streak to 18 straight, but Rutherford was sacked nine times through three picks. Miami wins. Champion Wake Forest needing a win over Maryland to get bowl eligible again. Terps already on their way to the Gator Bowl. And Bruce Perry on his way to the end zone in the third quarter. 49 yards and Maryland is down one, 21-20 after a Wake Forest interception. Scott McBrien, Jafar Williams, two touchdowns in 59 seconds. The two-point conversion made a 28-21 Terps. Wake Forest, very next play. Chris Barclay, 74 yards. He ran for 243 on the night and three scores. Three touchdowns in a minute and 27 seconds. Tied it at 28. But hold on, there's more. Maryland's next play. Perry for 80. He ran for 237 yards and three scores. Four touchdowns in a minute 40. Maryland wins 41-28. It's only the fifth time in D1A history that opposing backs each had more than 200 yards in the same game. Bama's final game, favored by a field goal to despite Hawaii's 5-0 record at home and despite having Vili the Warrior. Woo! Warrior, baby! No one coming to our house and pushes us around, baby. This is warrior time. Whatever you say, would Vili be right? Jason Wielden in for an ineffective Timmy Chang completed his first six passes, two touchdowns. This is the first one, Jeremiah Cochran. We were even at the half, fourth quarter. Hawaii's up three and Wielden looking for Clifton Herbert. This football may have touched the turf, but it's a touchdown, and it's sweet home Hawaii. Vili, you're right. Hawaii, right on, 37-29. Aloha.
Pete Carroll sending his aloha to June Jones. Nick Saban wondering what Mike Shula was doing on fourth down on his own 20 with about four minutes left, but that's another story. Advantage Trojans. Let it go. Notre Dame and Stanford tie Willingham back at Stanford where he used to coach, of course. First play from scrimmage, Julius Jones, 25 yards. This puts him over 1,000 for the year. Only the eighth Irish player ever to do that. Later on the drive, Jones. He ran for 218 yards, had 106 of that in the first quarter at 7-0. Stanford down 27-0. Mark Bradford fumbles. Quentin Burrow returns it for a touchdown. Notre Dame up 34-0 at halftime in what turned out to be a slow developing play. The Irish have two defensive touchdowns. He jukes him right there, and that's a top 10 nominee. But here's the scenario now. Bob Stoops, this one's for you. Fourth quarter, fourth and 17, up by 50. They fake a punt, up by 50. <laughs> Let it go. Highest scoring <laughs> output for the Irish in nine years, 50. The Notre Dame wins helps LSU because it weakens USC's strength of schedule by devaluing the Trojans' win over the Cardinal. You got that? That was much better than I put it. Virginia 50. Tech was 6-0, and then it lost 3-5 of five at Virginia, who lost its last four to the Hokies. LSU cheering on the Cavaliers. Third quarter, Virginia punting. You saw the arrow on Vincent Fuller. He looked like he jumped off sides. Eric Green, touchdown, but it was off sides on Fuller and Frank Beamer. Well, the special teams usually getting the job done, but not special there. Automatic first down, and, well, Matt Schaub takes advantage. 49 yards, Alvin Pearman, and it's 21-14 UVA. Fourth quarter, that's still your score. Fourth and goal from the one for Virginia, and Al Gross says, we're going for it. Wally Lundy scores. It's 28-14 Virginia. Vautech answers, third and goal. Kevin Jones, and we've got a seven-point ball game. Still seven, Virginia gonna go for a field goal. Oh, they're fakers. Top 10 nomination. They were only down seven. Heath Miller, that was a good call. Beamer beside himself. The very next play, Lundy, his third touchdown running. He had four on the day. It's 35-21, Matt Schaub. Senior celebrates the final. All right, Virginia win. The Virginia win scores a happy point in Bayou country. LSU beating South Carolina, a team that Virginia went south against in early September. Advantage LSU. On to the blue field of Boise State. Broncos hosting Nevada on the Smurf turf. Second play from scrimmage. Ryan Dinwiddie, Tony McPherson, 76 yards. Dinwiddie threw for 375 yards and four touchdowns. He also ran for two scores. That made it 7-0. Second quarter, here's more. Ryan Dinwiddie. T.J. Acree. Broncos have won 18 straight at home in the blue field. Boise State rolls over Nevada, 56-3. Broncos are whack champs for the second year in a row. Now, Boise State's win helps USC. Why, you're asking? Why? Well, because Oregon State beat Boise State earlier this year. And if USC beats the Beavers when they play next week, the Trojans will have beaten the team, which beat the WAC champs. That's Very how the BCS works. There you go. Oh, you can't lose them all if you win the last one. SMU needs to upset TCU to avoid an 0-12 season. LSU rooting for SMU, but not rooting hard enough. Robert Merrill in a tie game. He went for 98 yards, and the iron skillet goes to TCU. SMU loses every game 0-12, and, and the Horned Frogs win is a feather in USC's BCS cap because TCU beat Arizona, a Pac-10 team that USC also picked on. It's that simple, the formula. He wanted to go to postseason in all likelihood. Josh Harris leading the Falcons on senior day. You know, you're still strolling to Doig L. Perry Stadium and expect the Falcons not to pull trickeration on you. Josh Harris to Cole Magner, back to the talented quarterback. Josh Harris, 48 yards, and Bowling Green up 7 to nothing. Harris would hit Charles Sharon in a 24-17 game. Third TD hookup of the day. BG starting to pull away at 31-17. But Toledo would answer. Bruce Gradkowski leads the nation in completion percentage. Lance Moore leads the nation in catches per game. And he takes it in. 31-23 after the missed extra point. Toledo on the onside kick. Coaching points. Go get the ball. <laughs> Good job, scientific. Mark. On fourth and 11. Go get the ball. Gradkowski pocket collapses. Can't get out of there. Can't get rid of the ball. Bowling Green wins it 31-23. They win the MAC West. They'll face Miami, Ohio in the top quarterbacks.
Brad Smith leading Missouri into the game against Iowa State. And Brad Smith's off and running, as he did for much of the afternoon. Just a quarterback counter there, design play. When you have a quarterback like Brad Smith, that's what you do. This is not a design play. Maybe there's a little boot here. Rob Dragey coming up with his block. Smith's going to use it. Smith goes 61 yards here. Went for a buck 95. Couple of touchdowns on the day. Threw for over 100. Missouri wins the telephone trophy. Nice. Unlimited night.